Cool. All right. This says we are live. So what is going on, everybody? Welcome to another podcast. Today, I have Mark, a.k.a. Language, come up on the channel. We're going to talk about a couple of different things, as per usual. Uh, and, of course, you guys can ask questions and do that kind of thing. But, Mark, I'll let you do a, a quick introduction if you would like to, um, and then we'll get started. Wonderful. First of all, I'd like to say thank you for having me come on. You know, I've been a fan of the show since basically it started. I don't know how yep. long ago that's been, like two months. You know how um, this whole virus thing has our sense of time just all messed up. So oh, yeah. I really don't know how long it's been. A couple months? Yeah, two started, months, I think? Yep. Start at the end of March. Yeah, all right. So, uh, yep. Yeah, I'm Mark. I go as language come up online. And I'll just speak a little bit about myself. So, um, I'm from the state of Ohio. So, um, six years ago, I moved to Mexico City, um, and um, basically my world changed. So my dad originally was from Mexico. My hmm. my mom is from America. My dad didn't speak any Spanish to us growing up, so I grew up monolingual. Oh. Um, so in 2013, my dad actually got sick and passed away. So after that, I decided to kind of go to Mexico to get closer to his to his family and to learn Spanish, which was an idea that I had some, some time from before, but I never really thought it was going to happen. But when the thing happened with my dad, I took advantage of it and life's been amazing ever since. Nice. Cool. Yeah. I was going to ask how you ended up in Mexico. Cause most of the time when you hear, or not most of the time, but like most of the people that I talk to, if they're living abroad, it's like Japan, China, uh, yeah. ended up in Mexico. So that, that's, that's really interesting. Also, I have, I have links to Mark's stuff in the description below as per usual. I have his YouTube channel and his Twitter, so you can go check that out. Um, so let's let's jump into that. So so did your language learning um, also welcome to the stream, Alice. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Um, did your did your language learning start with the going to Mexico? Like you decided you wanted to learn it for your dad, or was language learning something that was always kind of in the back of your head, or how how did that come up? Well, mainly it was for my dad. But um, there was like these little touches of things along the way that would kind of make me think, wow, that's a really interesting thing. Because mm -hmm. almost all the time, literally 99.9% .9 of my life, my dad only spoke English. And the few times that I got to see him speak Spanish was like, it was like almost another person. It was You're interesting right. because, you know, he spoke perfect English. He had an accent, so you knew he wasn't from there. But you almost forget that he actually had a native language and it wasn't English, it was Spanish. And it was like a superpower when I would see him do that. Yeah. And um, so my mom who studied to be a Spanish teacher thought she was gonna have like a bilingual life. Mm -hmm. But no, for some reason my dad really loved English and you know, it was just monolingual all the way. Nice, what, um, what part of Ohio were you, were you from? I'm from the Northeastern parts. I'm from a city called Cortland, which is uh, in the northeastern part, about 45 minutes away from Akron, okay. where I studied university. Um, in the northeast Ohio region, Youngstown, Warren, Akron, Cleveland, that's my region. Nice. Okay. As, uh, funny fact, this isn't language related, but I actually know the the reason that I know where Akron is, everybody thinks it's because of LeBron James. But Moses, baby. But it, well, um, even before that, when I was young, my brother was a Miami Dolphins fan, and they had a defensive end named jason taylor who was just a an absolute powerhouse and he went to akron for college so like i, I absolutely I've, I've known where i knew where akron was like because of him because of just how like insanely dominant he was but that that's cool so that well, if you're if you're outside of that so i'm assuming um uh, if you visit home and stuff like that like you could still i don't know i guess spanish is kind of weird though because you could literally in my neighborhood of 5,000 people, I could walk outside and find a Spanish speaker in probably 20 seconds. You know what I mean? Just because wow. it's because it's so prevalent throughout the United States. Um, so you, all right. So let's. So you went to you went to Mexico, and you you mm -hmm. went there before you knew any Spanish at all. Um, well, I had take. Yeah, of course. Like like we all took Spanish right. in high school. So I had this high school, and then later a couple of semest semesters in university. And of course, you know, you get quite a decent vocabulary, although you don't, you know, really put it to practice. So I did have that going for me. Nice. Okay. OK, 
Okay, I uh, got a couple more people coming in. Language Boost, welcome. Ada, welcome. Tyler, welcome. Armchair linguist. Um, so when you when you started taking Spanish seriously, I'll tie this into the first question that's come on because the, the question is, um, do you have advice to learn vocabulary? Um, so let, let's go into that. When you started learning, right. especially with it being your first language, most people when they start learning their first foreign language – it's this just insane trials and tribulations of figuring out what in God's name is happening. So what was, what was that process when you first started? What were you doing? Um, were you focused on the vocabulary or the grammar? Cause I know everybody has a different, like weird little, like this was my first language type of thing. So, right. Well, you know, when I first got to, to Mexico, uh, I moved in with my, my uncle, my, my dad's brother. And he told me basically like the first day, okay, you're going to be an English teacher. And you're going to go study Spanish. And I'm like, I'm going to be an English teacher, but I can only speak it. So I, I don't know how to teach it. Right. Um, so from there, it just started a great adventure with me learning to uh, teach and getting trained and things like that. Mm -hmm. and then, you know, I got basically enrolled in a university that has um, a Spanish program for foreigners. So during this time, I was just basically discovering the whole online polyglots or mm -hmm. language learning community and my ideas weren't really developed yet so only really i could talk to you about uh this through the perspective of in the last couple of years because in the first couple of years i really you know was just going to school having real immersion mm. um not having such a, a concept of things like i do now so it's almost like with my spanish i've had to kind of like backwards work things out as opposed to just um, you know, doing it like how I'm doing with Russian now, mm -hmm. where I have a very clear idea of what I'm doing. So that first language was just um, basically just <laughs> really living it. So yeah, how long? And I do I do want to get on to, get into the Russian as well. I do want to get into that because I, I have a very like um, I don't know Russian, but Russian is it's it's like one of my favorite. I love I the way it sounds and stuff. But and and I'll get into Russian in a little bit. But um, in terms of, of Spanish, how long how long did you study? Like how long in terms of like an intensive study to go from kind of where you're even just dabbling or like I kind of want to learn Spanish to the point to where and I'm not going to use the the f word here fluent. Uh -huh. but, but how long until you were con like, you could kind of just get around and you were fine. You know, you may not understand a word here or there, but you were pretty much good to get around. Day-to-day -day situations, right? Um, you know the thing that happens with many f foreigners happened with me. You know, I started working at an English school, so um, I started speaking only English. And then, yeah. you know, even at uh, the Spanish university or program, everyone sticks together. All the Japanese are together. All the Americans are together, and um, basically, I fell into the the foreign trap. You know. And I had friends from all over the world, really. And but the circle was really just English, and they're great mm. people. But there came a time where I'm like, man, I really need to focus on my Spanish. I need to get to work, and I can't really do that um, um, going the way that I'm doing now. Um, I remember after basically the first year, I took kind of like an intense program at this at this university. And I remember feeling at the end of it that, oh wow. I felt, I don't want to say fluent because I don't know if I was up to that point yet, but definitely conversational mm -hmm. and proud of those abilities. Yeah. And um, I thought, oh, now that I can speak Spanish, why don't I start learning Russian? So I found a, a Russian professor. I started taking a few classes, but the cold rate, <laughs> the, the hard truth is just that, you know, you get up to a certain point, but then a whole new world exists mm -hmm. for you to go in your language. So I yeah. had to really stop the Russian and then just only go back to Spanish and, you know, I started taking classes uh, here in well, Spanish in 2014 and basically last year in January I decided to, okay, study the Russian and gotcha. go for it then. Well, that's, that's, um, that's cool because, I mean, I, especially if you've watched my channel, you know that that's where I get into a bad habit. I'm like, well, I studied it for a month, so I guess it's time to jump onto something. So it's, it's cool that you kind of fought that instinct to all right let's do this because because that's the thing usually you'll hit an intermediate intermediate plateau and then people are just like well this is it like i'm never advancing past this so that's really cool um absolutely absolutely um and to, to bring it back to an earlier point you know 
I guess my personality is a little bit just, you know, against dabbling, not at a conscious level, but just the way how I've lived, how I've lived my life mm -hmm. in the past. You know, I've always had like one interest and I always just went through like all in on that, you know? Right. First, it was running. You know, I started running at 13 and I ended my career at 22, actually at, at Akron, at the university. And um, when I finished, I took up the guitar. Then I was into that. And then since 2014, it's kind of been me discovering this passion of languages, foreign mm -hmm. languages, and also helping people with my own language. And it was something that just uh, started to develop through time. It wasn't like instantly, boom. It was like, oh, this is cool. Then you'd see, oh, it's cooler, cooler, cooler. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I fell into the English trap, but eventually I got out of that. Yeah, nice, nice. Um, there's a question. Uh, the Larry has a question. I'm going to hold this question off for just a minute because it, it, it involves Russian, and I do want to talk about Russian. Um, now, you know what? The, 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 look, people who watch this, we're all over the place. And I yeah, think we're all. I, that's, you that's, know, I'm a fan, so I know how it is. That's, Don't worry. We can. We can slide back and yeah. forth. So, uh, the Larry says, "Do you find the cases hard in languages like Russian?" But did like, did you find the cases hard in terms of of getting the hang of? And if you want to go one step further, how do you go about? Do you have a specific study pattern, or do you kind of just soak it in and just right. try to just figure it out as you go? Okay, so like I said, I've been studying Russian since the first of January of last year. So. You know, <laughs> you know, I didn't also fall into that trap of the New Year's goal, but I really mm -hmm. starts and I wins. Um, so, so a year, at, a year and four months. You're all, about that exactly. Man, okay, almost closing in on five months, and you know, I've always had this interest in Russian since basically I started learning Spanish, and I've watched a lot of videos about Russian. You know, I remember seeing like the early videos of of Moses talking about all oh, this Russian man, this <laughs> yeah. Russian, yeah. all this Russian. And I'm like, all right, it must be pretty tough. And literally every polyglot that would talk about Russian, like the first five words, it's hard, it's hard. Yeah. So I really, well, I knew what I was getting myself into. So I told myself that, well, at least for the first year, I'm going to do no grammar, you know, just mm -hmm. the natural method. And mm -hmm. basically as close to like the whole Krashen Kaufman thing as possible. You know, I've been very influenced by, by Steve and... Mm -hmm. Um, basically, um, I have let the grammar come into me naturally, and it's not to say um, I'm perfect at it or n not at all, you know, because um, I'm, I'm making my way through the language, but mm -hmm. you do see patterns emerge because I do have an in input-heavy approach, and um, I'm sure you might have noticed in some live chats or even in some other things, I'm really at this point where I, I'm questioning, okay, I do have this foundation, should I introduce the grammar now? Should I wait it out? If I should introduce it now, how should I do it? So I'm really thinking a lot about this, you know? Yeah. Yeah. One thing that Matt told me uh, in terms of Japanese, because I, I was asking him about uh, uh, grammar, and and this is and what he told me was simply, which I, I don't think, Russian probably has something like this, but like for more Japanese, just so ins every, everybody knows what take him is. Like, I feel like that's just like, even if you don't know what Japanese is, you know, whatever. But like, so he, he said, basically, read Take Him, don't study it, just read a chapter. If it sticks, it sticks, and if it doesn't, it doesn't. That way, you're just reading the information, and it's not like an act of study, and you're not going to get upset, oh, I don't understand this grammar pattern or whatever. And so I, that may help you in your Russian, just in terms right. of find like a grammar guide, read it. And if you don't, um, you know, if you don't understand it, whatever, no big deal. Move on, and you'll you'll eventually get that. Um, For sure. So, and I know that Steve is really not anti grammar study, but I, I mean, super I'll, grammar lights. But he's yeah, he just reads, and, and that's the thing. Your brain will pick that up. Like it's if you read it enough, it's almost impossible for your brain not to pick it up. It's just Absolutely. it's hard to convince yourself, you know, because we're we're all under this this ruse of well, if I don't learn it in three months, I'm not going to do Ugh. it. Don't but, get me started on yeah, that. Yeah, but you have, you've got to, you know, you have to, you have to do that. So, uh, let me see here. Chat, chat, chat. What did I miss? What is learning German? Of course, I'm late. I miss yikes. He learned, yeah, uh, he moved to uh, Mexico uh, and learned um, because of his father. His father spoke Spanish and 
but he didn't speak Grona. He didn't grow up bilingual. Uh, there was another question I think I missed. I think I remember somebody asking. Hold on, let me scroll up here. Um, after six years, do you con- do you consider yourself bilingual now? Like, do you are you? Oh comfortable? yeah. Okay. For sure, for sure. Um, I would say I th- I want to say, yeah. Like I think it was in October two thousand seventeen. I took the um, the C one like the official Spanish exam. Mm-hmm. I had gotten the the B two before. My goal before leaving Mexico was to at least get C1 because I told myself, if you get C1 and you leave Mexico, you have your whole life to get C2, mm, you know? Yeah. So just get up to this point. But, um, you know, that was quite some time ago when I got that C1. I definitely wouldn't say that I'm C2 yet, but I'm somewhere floating around in the C1 yeah. zone, right? Right. Well, um, so, and, and you said, uh, hold on, see, what about what about languages where it takes a long time to read, like Chinese? No, if, if you go um, and listen to the interview that I just did with Eric from Link, he has literally just read himself to a comfortable standing in Japanese. Wow. Like yeah. he's not, and that I mean Japanese, I I could argue Japanese is harder to read than Chinese because those symbols can be pronounced. In Chinese, wow. most of the time, if you see a symbol, that's the way it is. In Japanese, that's not necessarily the case. So, but um, but yeah, so you can do that. Um, what is your so you you you've been in Mexico for? Have you always lived in Mexico City? It's always been in Mexico, Mexico City. City. This is where my family uh, lives. So I've you know, this is basically where my dad was from. So yeah. I don't live with them anymore, but I still live in the city. Amazing city. Okay. Well, this is not language related, but I'm going to need you to go to like a CMLL or AAA show, uh, Japanese, uh, Mexican wrestling. Down oh there, yeah. Cause they, they run in Mexico city a lot. But, um, so what is your, what is your end goal there? Do you, do you have kind of a timetable for leaving Mexico? Are you kind of just there <laughs> indefinitely or do you, is that even something that you have any clue on? Oh yeah, man. Like throughout these years, <laughs> well, let me give you an idea. Mm-hmm. Um, in 2000, uh, whew, before I came here, mm-hmm. I told my brother in 2014, was it? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to go to Mexico for six months mm-hmm. and um, I'll be back because we were oh. writing a lot of music together and we were going to start a band. That was the idea. Mm-hmm. I said, I'm going to go to Mexico for six months. I'll be back and we'll, we'll start the band. It's been six years. Six years. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, he has a, a wife and baby and how life changes huh how how often do you visit home oh man i've been back three times in six years two times for weddings my uh my dear friend had a wedding and my brother had a wedding so uh i was the best man at both of those things i couldn't miss those and yeah. last year i went to vegas and um well i'm also a, a english teacher right now i teach online and i went to visit a a student of mine and we went to see a concert he showed me around all the sites it's great man language brings people together oh for sure no absolutely um with you being dead i don't know how mexico is in terms of the idea of because you always hear tells of people kind of reacting weird to kind of foreigners quote unquote you know being in their city and stuff have they ever been cold or are they always like, or are you just integrated into the society to the point to where no one even cares anymore? Well, um, no, the Mexican people are very friendly, very opening, very warm. They have a great sense of humor. All those things that you hear are about, all the good things are true and most right. of the bad things are not. Um, you know, they always know that you're a foreigner, but they welcome you in with open arms. And, mm. you know, it's been really nice. I haven't had any problems like that so far, so... Good. That's good. Good. And good. I wanted to say that one thing that um, I keep I kept on having like return dates, but then I kept on pushing it back. I kept on finding a reason to push it back. Um, and now I have a wonderful girlfriend, and I have a general time frame of when I may go back. But you know, people always tell me from the states or in Mexico, do you miss do you miss back home? Do you miss the states? And I say, you know, I was born and raised in the states. It's a great place. Mexico is also a great place. There's a time and place for everything. I'm just enjoying this time that I have now. Yeah, yeah? man. No, absolutely. Uh, you you might you might as well not to sound like the old dude on the block, but enjoy it while you can. You know, so for sure, brother. Um, let's see. Uh, Tyler says I don't speak much Spanish, but I've always found Mexican Spanish to be hard to follow due to the speed of it. 
Is there a dialect that you found or find easier to understand? Is there one that is harder? That's a great point. Because yes. if I'm not mistaken, I think Spanish is the words per minute second fastest language spoken <laughs> behind Japanese. Behind right? Japanese, yeah. I, I read that. So, but yeah, what do you think with dialects? Do you have any dialects that are easier to follow or? Absolutely, absolutely. So basically, if you want to see the standard of every variant of the Spanish language, depending on the country, essentially, you just have to take the reference point from the capital. So the, the Spanish from Mexico City is, is the most, arguably the most standard Spanish that there is. Sometimes they argue that it's, it's may, maybe the Bogota, the, the Bogota mm. accent, but these two are usually like the ones seen as like the most neutral, although that that's also a whole argument in itself. Is there a neutral Spanish? <laughs> right. It's hard to say if there is, but um, these Mexico City, the Mexico City accent and the region is really quite standard. And you have to keep in mind, Mexico is a big country and much bigger than a lot of people think. So, of course, like mm-hmm. in the States, we have a bunch of accents in Mexico as well. But if you're looking for a standard one, then you have to go with the Mexico City accent. They call the Mexico City people here Chilangos, and mm. it's the the accent from Mexico City, the Chilango yeah. accent. Well, I know if there's a neutral accent, it's not Argentinian Spanish because the, no! the way that they roll every single R as hard as they can, and then I I, I said this in a in that interview that I did with. Um, uh, Sonora, uh, struggling linguist. Um, oh, where like I still, if I say, if if I'm saying I, I, I a lot of times will still jow it because of how they j the oh, man. the pro the pronoun. So, well, that's like the magic of Spanish because you know it is so unique, and every country has their own style, and within the countries, there's so many styles and. The Argentine, uh, Argentine and Spanish is really nice as well. It's so I like it. extreme, but mm. so beautiful, you know. Yeah. Like they say, like show, like me show para la calle, you know, and it just sounds oh, it's really cool. Yeah, no, I, 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 I've, I've loved the art. When I learned predominantly a lot of what Spanish I learned, which I really need to, br- as a matter of fact, I need to brush up on it because I have something that I'm gonna work on with. Sonora uh, in terms of Spanish I, I definitely need to I, I was like I'll do whatever you want I just really need you got to give me a little bit of time to brush up because my Spanish sure. is terrible um, and right now you're really into Japanese, Japanese and you got to yeah. concentrate on that yeah which I, I'm actually I'm to the point now where I think I've been doing it long enough that I'm good like I haven't really I was talking to Tyler earlier You've made um, it a habit I, I've made it a habit but I was talking to him he he introduced me to this new thing it's a it's an app called and I know that I deleted all my apps, but hear me out. It's an oh, app. It's, a, bad. it's, a, it's an app called Bluebird, and so I downloaded it and um, just to, just to check it out because I and he was like, it's not gamification, but it's and he he when he told me this, I was like, I have to check it out. Basically, it's a free Pimsleur, and okay. that's not a lie. They have well, they have conversation practice, but. They have vocabulary practice, like vocabulary building, and you can create your own lessons. So you go into their, they have it grouped, like um, uh, agriculture, uh, entertainment, like all these different categories, and you build your own. So you don't have to go through each one before you pass the next. You pick your own platform that you want to do to learn about the topics you want to learn about, and then it's native speaker speaking, and then it introduces it to you in sentences, like you can get them in, like... And, um, and I was like, my God, this is a, an absolute game changer. Cause I do, even though I, you know, I, do, I did delete Duolingo and all that stuff, but I love, I do love Pimsleur and I know that there's a lot of English of in it, but I do get a lot of use out of it. And then he introduced me to this and I was like, holy God, this app is ridiculous. This app is amazing. Um, wow, cool. so, and they have, there's 163 languages on there. Like they have everything. Right. So. But 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 I'm to the point where I'm 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 good. I actually look forward to doing my Japanese every single day, and so and I think from where Spanish isn't me learning a language. I mean, I I still have a lot to learn in Spanish, but it's I'm not starting. I have a very decent foundation in Spanish. Oh, nice. And it might take me a little bit to kind of come back to that, but I'm still you know there. So it's not like I would be studying a new language. But you know what? At night after I hit all my immersion in Japanese. 
if I want to read a little bit while I'm going to sleep, read a couple of news articles or whatever, just to brush up on sure. Spanish, I, I think I may do that. But uh, sorry, yeah, this, sure. uh, this is not the me interviewing myself. Let's get back to well, you. You never, uh, <laughs> you never lose it. You know, you never lose it. And um, it's funny because, yeah. you know, when I came to Mexico City, my only foundation was just high school and a couple of semesters of college. Mm -hmm. And it's like, of course, it was really hard to just, you know, start speaking and, uh, you know. Yeah. But you, it still was that it was still there and you just had to bring it out of you. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. It was that's a rough what, process sometimes, but it was yep. still in you. And that's what Steve says. He says, you know, if he has a, an interview in Ukrainian, I don't even know if he speaks Ukrainian, but just as an example, like a language he's not like dominant in, uh -huh. he said he'll spend a week or two going over some of his stuff in Link and to re-kick the gears and then he's good. So, Yeah, and about Pimsler, when I started hearing about that, I was already kind of, I think, a bit too advanced to want to use that for Spanish. But mm -hmm. I remember before I started... Uh, my Russian seriously, I was kind of like seeing what Timzer was all about, and I heard you, I heard you um, say that one thing when you were studying Russian, how you can still remember to say, "Oh, I I, I speak yeah. a little Russian, or I understand ja, a little ja, Russian." Ja nim noga pini <laughs> and that that just, just stays in you. Yeah, so man. that and that's what I love about it, like, and I think especially for people wanting to output, like it's I, I still. I'm, yes, I'm doing MIA and I'm doing the whole, you know, that, that the whole immersion thing. But I, I still will stand by the idea of Pimsleur, and I will stand by the idea of Bluebird because it doesn't cost twenty dollars a month. Oh yeah. Um, how how have you? Fa did, were you going to say something else? I didn't want to cut you off. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I was gonna, I was gonna say, yeah. Um, <laughs> and I was saying, yeah, like the whole concept of immersion is getting like really popular, and I've been kind of hesitant to say that word because you know it kind of associates you with MIA or AJAX and I just really found out about them a couple of months ago so I mean I've been doing what I've been doing from before but mm -hmm. uh, what I really like about that is that you know if you learn a little bit about it um, the foundation is you have to put in your time it's yeah. not like it's not all a right get, it's three not a, months three yeah. weeks three days it's not a get rich quick scheme it's it's it, letting you know up front this is what it takes yep no, absolutely. Um, how have you found learning Russian after Spanish? Did you change your technique or mindset? Right. Um, so basically, I came into Russian after <laughs> having a very clear concept of what I wanted to do. You know, basically, I took a, I started with um, Asimil, right? Mm -hmm. And the best thing I ever did for my language is. Um, is I studied Asimov 25 minutes a day. Mm -hmm. I told myself, study 25 minutes a day and just whatever. So whereas a lot of people might think, oh, that's not a lot. But me just having to do or just wanting to do my 25 minutes a day, turn it into such a habit that mm -hmm. Russian is like such a part of me now. And of course, after a certain time, I just increased it like so much. But you know, yeah. having uh, lived in Mexico, um, you know, I've been getting immersion. It's just called living life, mm -hmm. right? Whereas right. Russian, you need to get this language in you and you need to find a way. You need to have your habits in line. So, you know, I would study um, with that Asimo book until I basically finished it. I didn't even follow the method that they prescribed. All I did was um, I would do a lesson a day for 25 minutes, usually I would get through a lesson in uh, 15 minutes, and then the next 10 minutes I would just review previous lessons, mm -hmm. and um, I would keep them going like that until I got to 100. Um, so after that, I got into, you know, I got the Ollie Richards book, and then I got mm -hmm. into this thing called Russian for Max, which is an incredible resource if you're learning Russian. This guy has a, has a YouTube channel, but what I use in particular is his podcast where he talks about so many interesting things uh russian or soviet history mod uh current affairs mm -hmm. whatever it may be and um he says that this podcast is for a2 to b1 speakers but i started using it right out of right out of um asimo mm -hmm. so my trick was to, to send it through link get the transcript mm -hmm. send it through link listen and read at the same time and of course you know, I wasn't understanding like a lot of the words or, but I was trying to grasp the ideas and mm -hmm. I would just do that every day. And, 
you would see how you would understand more and more and yeah you know yeah i know ollie richards has said before that um he really noticed that he could learn languages a lot faster when he read and listened simultaneously right so Cause you, cause if you, you were gonna... to yeah yeah if you were to ask me mark what's your method to learn russian or basically it's what i do now to learn spanish although that you know my experience with spanish learning it has well, was yeah. different i would just tell you listening and reading you know so i'm always experimenting with like um you know resources i have things of like i know what i want to do for example in the future and sometimes i go and check it out and see how uh, much i can understand if it's just too difficult you know, i'll put it away and i'll keep on building myself up and then i know i'll get that soon enough i'm mm-hmm. for sure yeah and um yeah i mean just listen and reading increase comprehension um you know russian has not not quite like english it's kind of like you know you can read it to us to a pretty good extent uh, if you know the alphabet but mm-hmm. you know there's some slight kind of things like you know just to say Zdrasvite, or like hello like you don't pronounce like every yeah. single yeah. you know letter there and um, Zdrasvite, yeah i actually literally it, it eventually became a pictograph for me i just recognized uh, like that itself i was like okay i know that's what that is because it is the spelling of it is so bizarre Right. There's a whole bunch and of letters in there that you don't pronounce, and some you, it's it's just crazy. That you soften, mm-hmm. and it's like, oh, how much do you really soften it? Um, but, you know, it's it's just been a passion of mine, and um, it's like the first language that, I don't want to say I've learned, I'm learning, but, you know, that's on my own accord, you right. know? The one um, that you picked out, it wasn't like a... Like your heritage, and it wasn't like right. it was you were literally just like, yeah, this is it. So absolutely, and sometimes I really wonder why am I so interested in Russian. Sometimes I want to just say, oh, I had a Russian friend and a Ukrainian friend in college, but I sometimes think, well, was that the really was that the real reason? For some reason, this language chose me. You know, yeah. so I it's don't a, think about it too much. I just keep on going it's, forward. It's a beautiful language, so I mean, it, it makes sense. So uh, you do know, you, so many. Oh, go ahead. oh, so many people will tell you like it's a harsh language like people refer to it as german as a harsh language mm. but if you really listen to it it's got i mean it's i think it's beautiful phonetically because it's just this mixture of hard and soft sounds continuously coexisting together that i think mm-hmm. it's just like wow yeah no, i agree completely i i love it man I, it's one of my favorite languages like legit oh it's so great um do you intend to pass on your heritage language to your children oh good question absolutely 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 Be- uh, the heritage language, yes, but it's not necessarily, you know, everything else. So, for example, um, let's say that I get super fluent in Russian or any other language. Mm-hmm. The only language that I will pass on to my kid will be Spanish because I, I want, you know, I do want him to start getting it from an early age, but only Spanish because, you know, I want my kid to see the beauty of language and my love for language. And that if he chooses to learn a language after that, perfect, you know? But I'm yeah. not going to force it down his throat. Right. Yeah. No, that's what I get people all the time who are like, oh, are you going to teach your kid a language? And I used to talk to him in Esperanto, and then I thought, man, I'm not comfortable enough. I'm afraid I would teach him something wrong. Same thing with yeah. Spanish. Yeah. Because um, I'm, I'm not good enough in Spanish. Like, I could ask him for a couple of mindless things, but... But um, it's one of those things. I want him to be interested because I want him to understand... Um, uh, I want him to understand just cultural diversity and, and a whole bunch of different, you know, what lang- language introduces you to things in a culture that you can't translate. And I want him oh to see gosh. that. Absolutely. But if he's like, I have no interest, I'm not going to be like, well, you're not my son. You know what I mean? I'm just going to be like, I oh, will. <laughs> well, if that were the case, you would have already disowned them because yeah. your son's too busy to be learning languages. Oh, man. He, 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 he doesn't, doesn't have any time. He doesn't, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah, I forgot I posted that video. I that said, was so that was so adorable. I loved it. I said, you want to learn languages with daddy? And he said, I don't have time. I'm busy. Or I'm busy, whatever he said. How old is so, he now? Uh, he is three and a half. The life of a three and a half uh, yeah. year old. No daddy. Yeah. No Japanese Which, today. I've got too many cartoons yeah. to watch. He, he doesn't know that he's learning, but he is because he, he always watches Nihao Kailan and Dora the uh, Explorer. So he's, he's picking up some words here or there. So. That's legit. 
Uh, as a Spanish learner who is not able to be in a Spanish speaking place, do you think it's a positive or negative thing to listen to and learn from people who speak various dialects? Or is it better to pick one? I currently use both Latin American and mainland Spain resources. I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm going to let you answer this, but I literally just heard Steve Kaufman talk about this on a pod, on a, um, live stream that he does. Steve live streams on his YouTube channel, like every Monday, it's him and Mark who own link. And, uh, a lot of times I'll have different, okay. Point is go check out Steve. Um, but so in this interview, he said that basically to that question, he would have said, yes meaning go learn it because the differences between mainland Spanish, mainland Spain, <laughs> Spanish, <laughs> Spain, sp- where's that at? Sp- yes, Spain, um, Spain, Spanish, European Spanish and Latin Spanish. Th- so much of the vocabulary is shared. Like I feel okay. like it's probably about the difference of American English and British English. Absolutely. So yes, just study it. If you have like, sure, pick one that you would rather, like if you want to watch, um, films from Mexico, Colombia, Argentina, all these places, then do that. But in terms of if you're just trying to learn vocabulary, just just learn it. Absolutely, absolutely. Because I think in, you know, in high school, I had two Spanish teachers, and the first one studied in Spain, the other one studied in, in Mexico. And, you know, I remember a lot of the, a lot of the words that we studied, let's say, in my first couple years, um, maybe are literally like this, I don't know, almost like the standard words. And the more you get into the language, um, you see the individual Spanish of each country. So Mm. maybe I wouldn't worry about that so much um, at the start. If you have a country that you know is already like the country for you, then of course you can focus in on that and, you know, make that your base and, you know, do kind of um, just like here and there Mm -hmm. exploration. You know, for example, um, I really, um, I want my Spanish to be, you know, near native eventually, right? And my base is this, the dialect from Mexico City. And um, it's funny because um, sometimes I give my girlfriend a hard time. She's from Caracas. She's from mm-hmm. Venezuela. And uh, I'm like, oh, no, you're, you're ruining my Spanish. <laughs> and um, Does she uh, speak because, English? Um, she speaks English, but fortunately we communicate in Spanish, uh, in Spanish like, in a relationship, especially because I'm working so so much in English yeah. doing my classes that you know sometimes it doesn't even feel like I'm in Mexico. You right. know, that's what my uh, I know some people. Well, one of my friends that lives in Japan, uh, that's what he talks about. Like he goes to work, and, and he he's not like he's not in like jet or anything. He's li- just works for the Japanese government. Like he's like a school teacher. Like he'd be a school teacher here in America. Right, right. And he but even when he goes to these schools. It's all English all the time, right? It's... For sure. So I would tell you, let's say, okay, so I used to teach classes here in the city. I used to work at language schools, businesses. I even taught at a university. But, you know, I wasn't working so much like I'm working now. So mm-hmm. I really could balance the English-Spanish. There was a point where I tried to limit my working hours to just to bare bones hours just to just to make me able to get by while i could really go at my spanish and mm-hmm. just a side note the thing that really um took my spanish to another level is i had um a really wonderful beautiful teacher in my last level of spanish named fabiola hola fabiola <laughs> she speaks great english so hello fabiola <laughs> and um you know i finished the last level and i said what should i do now with my spanish and she's like you should take you should take classes at the university because in Mexico it can be pretty common if you just ask the teacher excuse me i'm really interested in this class can i can i take it please most of the time they say yes and now you're a university student in a foreign country yeah. so i was taking linguistics classes and spanish linguistics classes for basically a year and a half and this was the year that i achieved well i got my b2 certificate and then one year later i got my c1 certificate and this was like real real immersion you know so yeah yeah it was amazing for sure yeah no that's that's super good um and it sounds like an amazing thing um 
that you can just go and like be like, well, I guess I'm just part of this class now. So, <laughs> and they treated you just like you were part of the class. It was really, really great. So we're going back to uh, what we were talking about before, man. If you were interested, they said, come on in, and you know, the te- I wasn't the greatest student in the world. You know, I was always good when I tried, but it was <laughs> only an interest thing. So that's one hundred percent me, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally relate to that. And um, one of the teachers, my proudest academic moment in the history of my life, um, one of the teachers told the students, why can't you be more like Mark? He comes to class, he's interested, he's not here to kind of get in the way. And I'm like, oh, he used me as an example? Me as like a good academic example? This is my proudest <laughs> academic moment ever. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny, man. Um, do you, do you have any problems understanding Castellano, 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 Castilian? I don't, you know, uh-huh. what you know what I'm saying? Of course. Um, I would tell you it's English, probably the English. accent that I'm least used to hearing, but, you know, for example, even my, my ling- Spanish linguistics professor said when he would go to Andalusia that he, it took him like days to adapt his ear to be able to mm-hmm. to listen to the Spanish from Andalusia. Um, for the most part, I haven't had a problem, but I will admit that they're like the, the people that I've least communicated with. But you know, typically there's no problem. The thing I really love about Mexico City because it's because it's like the okay, you know, it's really like I would say like the New York City of Latin America or the Tokyo of Asia. Mm-hmm. It's it's the hub where all of these Spanish speakers come together um, that, and they're just coexisting. So it's just wonderful if you love Spanish languages in general because, you know, here you can talk to a Cuban, awesome, Venezuelan, sweet, Colombian, mm-hmm. you know, Mexican, you name it. Yeah. And it's like a smorgasbord of the Spanish language. It's really great. You get a, a little slice of everything. For sure. It's- See, really cool. Um, this isn't a, a question necessarily, but there are people talking about reading books. And uh, Emmanuel said, "I didn't know they wrote books in Esperanto. They do. They have, there's a ton of books in Esperanto, actually, especially with uh, the recent boom of it. Um, uh, the Hobbit is in is ooh. written in Esperanto. Um, you know, there's and and then the Harry Potter book that." Um, they were talking about that's a fan translation though it's not a oh uh, official thing it's not an official thing but it's it's a fan translation Wonder how accurate it is yeah i don't know i'd be interested to read it i i feel like i know enough esperanto that i could yeah. muddy my way through it except for like probably some of the magic related uh-huh. stuff but um but yeah they they definitely do um dude i swear that what i know about esperanto is through you like you oh, yeah. are like my source of Esperanto. Esperanto information. I love it, man. I don't, I don't, you know, use it anymore. But you know, right? I definitely. I'd seen you had made a reaction to the Condor Klein. Why I won't learn Esperanto? Yeah, he um, uh, video. He, he, he either commented on that video. Mm. It, it was really positive about it. He didn't say anything negative. But I think it's really easy with. Um, I think it's really easy for people who like. If you speak three, four, five languages, Esperanto is probably useless to you. Oh. And I think a lot of people, what they don't understand is Esperanto, for me, and the reason that I will always represent for the sure. Esperanto community is I never had confidence that I could learn a language until I got with Esperanto and learned it. Um, yeah. And I had this ultimate clicking moment where I was like, okay, I can do this because I was scrolling through I, I was in a ton of which i've gotten out of a lot of them because just the some people in the community kind of rub me the wrong way but um oh. i was scrolling through my facebook and i was in a ton of groups and like all that would pop up is like esperanto stuff from time to time and i would just scroll down and uh, i was reading a post and i read it and i scrolled past it and then i was like wait hold on and i scrolled up and i realized it was an esperanto post there was no translation i just oh. read it and took it for what it was, and just continued on about my business. So I, I will always defend Esperanto because yeah. it gave me the confidence that, hey, no, you if you just stick with it, you absolutely can learn a language. Yeah, and you changed my perspective on it because although I hadn't thought too much about Esperanto before, but, you know, <laughs> you know, it's just like, all right, well, I mean, 
there's so many countries that have languages mm -hmm. and well when the way that you put it i can I'm like i'm all i'm all i'm all on the esperanto train yeah. because i mean I, what a, what a great reason you know it gave you the the belief that you could learn a language and mm -hmm. I mean, here you are doing it now, so it's it's wonderful. Yeah, and and the thing that I always defend too is like, the thing with Esperanto is, um, okay, like for example, if you are in Mexico City, right, and you walk outside and you're like, oh my god, I love Spanish so much, I want to practice. Yeah. Somebody's gonna be like, uh, okay, or <laughs> probably not at all. In Esperanto, if you find somebody else that speaks Esperanto, whether it be online or not, they want to talk to you 24-7 and always because you two are learning the language for the same reason. It's because you love it. It's not because you're going to Spain or you feel like you have to go to Japan or your job's making you move to Turkey or whatever it is. You know what I mean? Right. So, like, they're more inclined to help you. Granted, the biggest issue is they're probably also learning. So who really corrects who? I don't know. But right. still, though. You know, one thing I was thinking about before uh, the call is just the pure positivity of the language learning community. And I remember you mentioning in one of your podcasts about some negative things or people in the Esperanto community. And uh, it made me curious because, you know, overall, it's like, what a positive community. You know, like, mm. it's fantastic. Yeah, there's just some, it's just some elitism, like, kind of. It's almost like people are upset that more people are into it now because it was their own little niche, you know. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. It's kind of that it's kind of that hipstery I knew about it before it was cool mentality that just Oh, I don't I know what you mean. Yeah. I, and I just I don't care for that, man, cuz like nah, I just don't care for it. So And one thing that you've talked about before that I found interesting that I never even was aware of before is you said that man, if you speak Chinese or even sometimes Spanish is like, all right, cool, cool, that's cool. But you go to a Vietnamese person, they're like, oh, I have to teach you my life. Oh, here's yeah, my man. information. When are we yep. going to talk? I have to help you. Yep, here's my phone number. Please call me. Here's, yeah, man. They, they, uh, at some point down the line, dude, it, you know, it's, 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 it's in, it's something I want to learn, but, uh, yeah, for sure. And I've always been kind of drawn to things that are a bit outside of, <laughs> let's say, I don't know, like the most popular thing, which is kind of funny because, you know, you know, I'm learning now I've learned Spanish and Russian. These are like major languages. But um, for example, you know, there's so many languages to learn in Asia, you know, mm -hmm. Korean, Chinese, well, Mandarin, mm -hmm. Cantonese, Japanese. I think it's really nice to, you know, actually, I was going to say show your appreciation for the people, the culture, the language. And um this is the reason that you sold me on your dabbling. Before I was like, oh man, my man Seabolt needs to pick something <laughs> yeah. and stick to it. But you told me, hey man, I'm doing this, this makes me happy. If I can communicate with some people, that's cool. And I'm like, you know what? He, he makes a good point. So I was on, like, you turned me on your side, but then I'm like, oh, but it would be great if he like, could at least, you know, have Learned one language something. that was like a strong yeah. language. Right. Right. Yeah, because so you could see what it's like. Yeah, because I, I wouldn't even consider like if, so, if people ask me what my strongest language is, and I generally will say it's kind of a toss up between Esperanto and Spanish, uh -huh. and that's not necessarily saying anything good. <laughs> okay. Um, you know what I mean? And that's I, I made a joke. To, I was talking to my boss at work the other day, and uh, I was because like he he runs a YouTube channel too, and he's got oh, wow. he um he runs like a like a. Uh, uh, a channel for like guns and stuff like that like he oh, loves nice. like you know like he has like and like he does like some like tech stuff and like um he's he's way bigger than i am like he's he he had a video that went like viral he's got viral, like, several, viral. several thousand subscribers and like oh, that's um sweet. but i was telling him because like he knows i have another channel too that i've been monetized on for years like it's got 1500 subscribers and like because I, I did a bunch of stuff on it but um, I told him, I was like, I, I've, I got monetized on my language channel. And he said, he, he said, uh, he said, I guess you're going to have to learn a language now. And I was like, that's literally a joke on my channel, man. I was like, that's, oh, I was like, that's literally a joke. So that's so funny. But yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty, I don't know. So, and the cool thing is that like, I, I, I really, I really think that 
you're going to do it. Like, I just have such a positive feeling for your, oh, your language learning future and your progress. And I just know that you've, you've kind of like been brought over to the, the right side, like the, the truth. And you're yeah. just going to only go as far as you well, want to take it. I think that's kind of where I'm at right now is that, um, I've got, I've spent so many years trying to fast pace, quick, learn a language in a couple of months so I could put four or five under, cause everybody has this. I want to know this many, you know, everybody wants to for be that sure, guy. For sure. But I think so many years of failing because I'm only studying languages six or eight weeks at a time has finally put in my mind like, hey, why don't this year... Look, I, the idea for a lot of people in MIA is to re reach this native... Like, everybody wants to have Matt's ability to speak, right? Uh-huh. And I'm or not saying... Katsumoto. That's a, yeah. Katsumoto, yeah. Right? And I'm not saying that that's not eventually a goal, but I'm also saying if I get to a point to where I can comfortably conversate, and I know, you know, I don't, I don't think that even a year would necessarily do that, but if I can comfortably conversate and I can understand a good 80, 90% of what's going on, <laughs> that, that's when I will consider starting into something in, in terms of. I'm not saying that I won't go through a phase where I'm like, all right, I need to just just something easier. Because the thing is, um, there's been a few times where I've literally taken five minutes out of my day and I will go and look at uh, a Swedish sentence or or go look at um, something in French or something like that. And it's because it's so similar to English. I can say, ah, like, look how easy this is. And, it, and, um. and then I'm like, okay. And it's almost like it gets my mind back in this pace of... Okay, see, so you're learning now, so now that your brain is retaining information, let's go back to Japanese. Like, you know, like, and and I'm not saying that I won't just dabble a, a touch here or there, more so for my mental sanity, but I don't nice. foresee Japanese, especially because of the way that I'm doing it now with the watching things that I enjoy and, right. things, like, it's just, I'm just having fun. Like, I'm not actually studying the language. I am, but I'm, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not... It doesn't feel right. like, oh god, let me get my Duolingo streak or anything like that. I'm, I'm just having fun with the language. So, of course. And when you go for comprehension, it really takes off all the pressure. You're just like, I'm gonna spend time with this language. I'm gonna do what I like. I'm gonna enjoy it. Yep. Uh, progress will come. And you know, when you understand is mm -hmm. when you're able to speak. That's that was the problem from the whole speak from the beginning approach is that you need to get the language in. in. Of course, I understand that. Um, yep. It's motivating to speak and. You know, I, I kind of have my own thoughts on on all on all that, but at the end of the day, we know what it takes to be able to speak a language, and it's and it's input. Yeah, yeah. Because if it's not like what like I've always said, and I I don't criticize. I I love Benny. I think Benny is a fantastic language learner, and I think he's a fantastic dude. But the idea of speak from the beginning, if you don't have anything in your in the language, what are you speaking? Right, right, right. And so. um. I, I did this kind of, kind of almost like, I guess it would be kind of like a controversial thing in terms of language learning community or language learning theory. Basically from the first week um, that I studied Russian, I scheduled my first italki class, mm -hmm. right? And here is the thing. It wasn't, it wasn't to speak from the beginning, but it was more so to, to have someone that I could have this contact with the language and like... Mm -hmm have it be just a little bit closer and you know because um i really think the key to motivation is uh emotional connection mm -hmm. in language learning so you can achieve this through various ways um one of my ways is simply uh delving into the music finding a group you like and just really letting the music come over you and just mm -hmm. fall in love with it i can't tell you how many times well not so many times because i'm actually really motivated to learn russian but on the spare case where I'm like, oh, okay, uh, mm. I, I listen to a song, I'm like, oh yeah, I love this language. Yeah. Uh, I want to learn this. And I'm just like, boom. Yeah. I'll send you, I'll try to remember, I'll send you the teacher that I used because, first off, she's super cheap um, in terms of lessons, but uh, she has a, uh, what is it called, WhatsApp? Is it WhatsApp? She has a WhatsApp, WhatsApp. WhatsApp yep. group that she adds everybody to, and all of her students are in there talking Russian, talk, mm. speaking Russian, and asking questions. So she actually, like, so it's not just the, like, $10 for the hour-long lesson or whatever. I mean, you're paying $10, and you're in that group, and you're just, it's just constant. And, and she's instant with, so, like, people, I've seen people ask questions in there. Like, when I was studying Russian a little bit, 
people would ask questions and instantaneous, man, she's answering. Wow. So it's it's constant, just twenty four really seven. Nice. Yeah, she's she's really cool. I'll send you the link to her. Let's um, talk about something. Just one real like, interesting comment. Do you have any like, I don't know, pet peeves when it comes to language learning? Because I'll tell you mine. For example, mm-hmm. um, I really don't like to listen to non-natives speak the language. Let's say in the classroom before I have a very clear concept of how the language works. So, mm-hmm. for example, I could listen to a foreigner speak Spanish, and that would be perfectly fine for me now because my concept of Spanish is very, very concrete. But, mm-hmm. like, I really don't want to read, like, people writing in Russian or speaking Russian who really are in this learning phase as well. I just, you know, want to hear native speakers speak mm-hmm. it and just, you know, I don't want to be absorbed in any kind of mistakes. So that's so, kind of like my little pet peeve. quirk there. Mm. Mm-hmm. Really and truly, the only pet peeves I have in languages are uh, not necessarily learning related. It's kind of the, well, of course... And I'm not even going to get into the topic of the I learned, you know, mm. Spanish in a week or whatever. I'm not, I'm not going to get into that stuff. But um, one of my biggest pet peeves are is, are, is, whatever the correct <laughs> verb is there, is that there's a lot of people online in the language community who are teaching in English with their courses right they have courses you can buy yes and they never i've never seen like there's some people that i've literally never seen speak that language ever whoa really and it's like why would i buy but i mean they're making a living on it so kudos to them like for example um this is the opposite of that gabriel silva has a bunch of courses but it's well documented on his youtube channel of course how much he can speak so that I'm like, okay, cool. That makes sense, right? He gives a course like he he is proficient in plenty of languages that he offers courses in. I'm okay with that, right? Steve, I trust Steve. Steve knows ten languages great. He's learned ten more that are he's pretty solid in. And of course, Link has the built-in dictionary, so you kind of make it what you want anyway. So I, I trust that. And then yeah, and then Matt has a program that doesn't even cost anything, and then people will criticize him. Mm. but it's like these people that never even speak the language and people are like yes this is the gospel buy this guy's course 400 bucks go for it oh my gosh i know i mean yeah (laughs) there's like since i live in mexico city i get like the marketing gear towards here and there's like this this swedish guy that's trying to teach all of like uh the latin americans english and he's like oh in three months in three months yeah. and you listen to this spanish that i'm speaking now i learned this in three months and like his spanish is actually pretty good and i seriously doubt he learned it in three months, three months. you know yeah no for sure so um what so I'm, I'm gonna let's i'm gonna run through a couple of these questions here i've got the chat i've got it scrolled up here um i'm gonna hit a couple of these questions because i want to get them um uh what are the mistakes you made when learning Spanish that you are trying to avoid now with Russian? That's a good okay. question. It's a S- deep question. Right. And I, I Or there may not I, be any that you can recognize, but is there anything No Yeah. Basically I feel in a way that you know, if I don't know if you've seen my um my weekly study schedule. It's online for people to see for what you know, whoever interested. But anyway, I'm going really hard in Russian now, but I'm still trying to, you know, have a little bit where I do some active Spanish study. Only right now, 15 minutes. Later, I'm going to increase it to 30 minutes. And the I, the ideal for me would be to do an hour of Spanish a day and then just go whatever I can do in Russian as many like, mm. hours as possible, you know, which aren't so many because I work a lot. But anyway, right. I'm trying. Um, when I, look, I, I, basically I would say that no, it's a good and a bad thing. Okay, so I was in Mexico and I was really living experience. I was really living, ex- you know, the Spanish speaking experience most of the time. But um, I would say that I wouldn't. Um, I, I would change the fact that I allowed so much on my real immersion that uh, I wish I would have really uh, even gone harder on my, you know, outside of mm. the real life. So, I mean, you know. I give myself, you know, these, these just like, okay, I'm doing, I'm here living in Spanish, so I'm going to watch this in English, no big deal. I'm going to listen to all these albums in English, no big deal. Uh, now I'm very kind of like 
picky without. I'll barely watch anything in English as far as like a series or something mm. like that. I'll change it to Spanish. Only like with Game of Thrones, I watched it like Maria. in English. Um, so basically, my mis- basically, I wish I would have just um, done more inputs like outside of my like living immersion, right? Mm. Um, but uh, now with my Spanish, I'm not making that same mistake or that's the plan that I'm going to be reading. I'm going to be listening. I'm going to be paying attention to the finer details of the language. Um, but like I said, you know, I had an experience that, that not everyone is going to get. And although I did try to apply a lot of the language learning principles, I know that I could have made even more of an effort. That's why with Russian, I'm just going, I'm like all in. Cause I know that the only way that I get this language into me is me getting it into me. Yeah. You know, I can't walk outside and hear people saying, right. Privet, privet, you yeah. Know. yeah. Okay. So yeah. So just spending more time with it, like making sure that you're getting time yeah, with it, it, not, not being yeah. lackadaisical with it. No, for sure. That, that makes sense. Um, you see, I've known many people that only speak English to their child while between the rest of the family speak their native. Um, the I had a girl in here uh, named Valeria who is she is a second generation no she's I guess technically she's a first generation Russian immigrant oh, okay. she was, she was born in Russia and she moved here when she was three so she hmm. speaks English natively but with her this is not the exact same thing that this guy said but um, she own like her family between them they all speak English but they only speak Russian to each other. She does not speak English to her parents. She speaks Russian. Man, that's epic. Um, um, the interesting thing about that, and I don't know, if, if I were ever to talk to her, I would like to ask her some questions like, well, first, for example, I'm interested in the fact of, for example, people um, growing up in America having English be their dominant language, but um, they have a family language. And sometimes you see the extent that really that takes you and then that there are mm-hmm. holes there are, are gaps because basically your strongest language is going to be the one that you're educated in so you know it's kind of funny because you know you know i think that i <laughs> i i'll say that i know probably um maybe and like more spanish than some people that were uh born and raised speaking it but living in america and having the context of um you know um, basically English and mm. maybe they may add some kind of um, just English words and some of their ideas whereas I kind of like know how not to do that mm-hmm. so I'm kind of interested in that idea of like man how I'm sure it takes you like really really high but there's these some things where like oh how do you say that oh how do you say that and I would really like my child to be be educated in one of those schools that have you know, that has English and Spanish to have this kind of bi mm-hmm. level education. I think that would be great so they could develop their you know yeah. just outside of the whole family life language. Yeah. My uh my sister is a teacher in Georgia and the school she teaches at, like she all the classes have an ESL aid. Like, cause, oh, wow. cause it's just it's like and she'll a lot of times say a sentence and then the English you know, the the aide will then repeat it in Spanish because the schools are just mixed. Oh, yeah. So. Huh. Yep. Cool. Um, Tyler says, I know in Irish they say... Oh, okay, sorry. I'm so back. <laughs> this is this is from something from like 20 minutes ago. But uh, I know in Irish they say learners should pick a dialect and stick to it. In Norwegian they say learners shouldn't worry about dialects until later. But later expose yourself to as many as possible. Yeah, and I think this is kind of like... Honestly, what it reminds me of the most, speaking of all this dialect... dialect stuff dialectual the dialects is that um arabic right a lot of people are like where do i start what do i learn well i know that people are some people are kind of against learning um fusa or modern standard arabic Mm. and to me if i was learning arabic which i studied for a very brief period because as you know i've dabbled in if it's a language i've probably dabbled in (laughs) and um icelandic well, no, no, not us. I, I, I would, as a matter of fact, what brought up Bluebird earlier when I was talking to Tyler, I was like, I would love to just. I, I said, I, I wish that Icelandic had more resources, and he was like, Bluebird mm. has it, and I was like, What is Bluebird? And he was like, Oh man, but um, 
I think that to me, you don't, you think that you know what dialect, like for example, if Spanish, right? I would love to learn the Latin American Spanish in terms of from Mexico. Sure. But at the same time, I also love the Argentinian accent and I also love, so, and you never really know what accent that you want to learn just because of where, you know, who knows where life will take you, right? Absolutely. And it goes with Arabic. So if Arabic, if you just know that you want to learn Arabic, why not learn modern standard Arabic? And then you can adjust your dialect when you figure out what path you're going to take. 100%. Same thing with the European Spanish and the Latin American Spanish. You just learn it. Just learn. Of course. Just start learning. You'll be able to distinguish the differences. And in fact, yep. it'll just make your whole Spanish knowledge even richer, which is fantastic. Yep. Uh, what are your... I hope this person... I've, I've, I've managed chat really poorly tonight. Sorry, guys. It's all um, good. What are your favorite Hispanic books, films, or TV series? Oh, man. Now, here's here's a question, too. I don't know if this person's still in here. I'm going to let you answer that, but I want to know if you're meaning specifically specifically native content or, like, for example, I read Harry Potter in Spanish, that kind of thing. I'm assuming, you know, we'll just go ahead and assume, probably mean native content, That I would assume. Right. Well, you know, <laughs> there actually is a lot of native con mm -hmm. uh, content, so... Uh, Spanish is the, sec what, the second most spoken language uh, by native speakers. You know, you know the list of countries that speak it, so there's yeah. resources. The literature has just a vast um, history and richness that Spanish uh, language literature is just really great. If we're talking about favorites, there's this book called, um, in English it would be, um, the, I think the, Savi the Savage Detectives in Spanish it's Los Detectives Salvajes mm. and um, it's by one of like the most famous m let's say modern day Spanish writers he was a Chilean that um, kind of grew up in Mexico but then lived in um, Spain in his adult life and this book came out in like the late 90s and it's really just about the story of uh, this group of, of university students in Mexico City, and they all they just love literature and they want to become great po uh, poets. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they write together and they get into all these kind of adventures. And um, it really just reminds me of like living in Mexico City and having the adventures. And man, it's just, it's really great because the book is like, no, unlike any book that I've ever read, it's a book that starts in the 70s. And you can follow like the the characters throughout the decades, and it ends in the '90s. And sometimes they'll go back into the '70s, and you see how like these characters develop over a long, long time. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest just check it out because I know that if I tell you all these books about a group of um, Latin American poets that are really trying to make an impact, maybe you think, oh, it's about it's about lit literature, about literature, about poetry. No, I'm not. Give it a chance because the things that happen are just so amazing. I mean, for me, that's my favorite book that I've read so far. Mm. Um, as far as Spanish shows, man, there's one called Senor Avila, Mr. Avila or whatever. And um, it's a show that almost no one that I know know of, like I mean, people here, but no one learning it because, you know, it was an HBO show. Mm -hmm. And of course... You know, people mostly look on Netflix, and they have a good selection on Netflix as well. But check out this show called Senor Avila, and um, it's literally like you know, I basically grew up on two thousands uh, HBO shows. So mm -hmm. it's really like all of these shows mixed mix into one. Um, takes place in Mexico City, so if you want to focus on the Mexican, well, the Mexico City dialect, well, perfect. There you go. So, amazing show it's a show that you have to let the story play out because if you just watch the first few episodes you go eh, maybe not so much but by the end of that first season you're gonna be like oh my god i've got to watch everything like yeah no question nice. and this show for me probably is like the number one show and of course right now this show called la casa de papel um, yeah, yeah, i've heard a bunch of paper people house talk about it. fantastic if you're learning spain from spanish it's fantastic if you're you know, my brother who doesn't know Spanish watches it. I mean, yeah. it's great in general, but 
I've had a bunch of people ask me if I watched that, and I, I've, I've, I've not watched it, man, but it's to the point where I've heard it so many times that I feel like I need to watch it. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely worth it, because it's like the same thing with the book that I just told you about. If I tell you the premise, you're going to be like, oh, whatever. I mean, it's about some guys who you know, hold up some place, they want money, da 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 da, da. We've, we've seen this story many times, mm-hmm. we've heard it, blah, blah, blah. We're, it's not so interesting watch it it's like the same thing so yeah not well the the thing when i stopped judging books by their cover so to speak um i never (laughs) so i i I was a i was a store manager at gamestop for six years and um i had a grandmother come in one time and was asking me about just different things for her grandchild or whatever and so he had a game boy advance and um and I was like, well, what about Mario? You can't go wrong with Mario, right? And I feel like Mario has gotten so big where... I mean, if you don't play games, like, surely... I feel like everybody knows who Mario is. Like, the Mario... Whatever, right? Of course. Um, and she was like, oh, she was like, what? <laughs> she said, what's Mario? And I was like, oh, I was like, well, you're this plumber, and, like, there's this basically dinosaur that's trying to hurt you, and, like, you get... <laughs> and I was like, you get these um, mushrooms that make you big, yeah, and like- then you go through pipes and i was like this sounds terrible i know but it's amazing yeah and so that at that moment i was like i think i just proved myself a point like just give something a try because if someone were to explain that to me you're a plumber you're getting attacked by a dinosaur (laughs) you're eating flowers to give you to be able to shoot fire at them while you're going down pipes and oh no i would be like that sounds ridiculous it sounds ridiculous and but what a way to have a childhood to be growing up on that. I, I know one cool fun fact is that I know that you're you're the class of two thousand five just like me, so we must have like the same references and everything. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh wow, I, for some reason I thought you were I thought you were like not necessarily way younger than me, but I just assumed that you were like mid twenties or something. Uh dude, I just shaved today, believe me. If you oh, would have okay. seen me with my beard, maybe I would have cut up a little bit, but That's... I I took off some years. Yeah, when I when I which I've I've had a beard basically for I don't know, man, nearly my entire life, really. Um, and like I'll shave it ever so often, almost really just to irritate my wife sometimes, um, just because she <laughs> she'll always get on me, man. Because like like uh, I have two hairstyles. I have grow it until I'm tired of it, and then I shave it. Oh my god, Ooh, and, we're long lost brothers. Yeah. I'm, I'm the same way. And she'll always be like, pick a hairstyle and keep it. Stop doing that. Like, just grow it out. Go to the. And I'm like, I'm not paying somebody 30 bucks to cut my hair. I'm going to grow it until I'm tired of it. And then I'm going to shave it. That's just what Amen. I do. Amen. But um, hey, that's that's my yeah. strategy too. And so that's what I'll do with my beard. Like, people will be like, oh man, your your beard, what do you do? And I'm like, I don't shave. Like, it's 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 such a hassle for me to shave because my hair grows so fast that I just let it grow. And then I'll I'll eventually trim it, um, but if I shave completely, like full shave, like I, I look like I'm twelve. So <laughs> yeah, I mean honestly, that's my same procedure. I buzz my hair and I let it grow out until it gets long. Then I cut it because mm-hmm. my hair grows so fast. It's actually fun to have like a new hairstyle every couple weeks. Yeah, I don't mind it. Yep, no, I'm, I, same same here, same here. Um, let's see. I love how Americans don't know what WhatsApp is. I just don't use. I, don't, I know, I know. I just, Before I moved to Mexico, <laughs> they said, "Do you have WhatsApp?" I'm like, "What's WhatsApp?" Yeah, and they're like, "Download it. You need to download it. This is such an important part of Mexico yeah. to have WhatsApp." And boy, were they right! Really? Oh yeah. Nice. Yeah, I like. I know what it is, kind of, but like, I just never. Right. You know, I like mean, I always use Facebook Messenger. I still use that with all my brothers, my friends. Yeah. No, it's, I, I, I do that. Um, ba, 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 ba. My brother spoke Serbian until second grade when he moved with us. Nice, nice. Serbian's cool. I'm focusing on Mexican dialect with telenovelas. There you go. What was the... There's a, there's a show that they use here in the United States to teach Spanish with telenovelas. What is that show called? Um... They did something like this when I was in school too. Uh, I couldn't remember what it was called. What is that show called? I'm gonna start googling here. Let's see if there's anything else. Mario sounds deranged. Yes, Mario sounds deranged. 
Uh, I just graduated yesterday. Well, congratulations. Hopefully, congratulations. Hopefully, you got something cool out of it. I know graduation here doesn't exist because of, oh. because of all this stuff. What is that telling? Oh. Yeah, and I, I didn't quite get the whole thing of here's my picture of when I graduated. Congratulations, seniors. It's yeah. Like, uh, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for uh, thanks for that. Let's see here. Um. Oh, uh, come on. There um, we go. Let's see. No, not that one. I'm in to answer the one thing about the telenovela, it's um, if you want to watch like a really cool, young, modern, let's say telenovela. I don't know if it's quite like that, but it's it's about just young people in Mexico City, and it's amazing if you want to learn this the dialect from Mexico City mm -hmm. and learn all the slang. It's called um, "Soy tu fan." I'm your fan. Mm -hmm. If so, if you don't mind watching like. I mean, for me, I like it, but there you go. That's a good recommendation. Yeah, I need to. Somebody said Destinos. I don't think that's a Destinos. Mm, maybe. I don't think so. I don't know. There, there's one. It's the. I guess realistically, I don't know what I'm looking for because it's incredibly <laughs> cheap. Like it's it. It's like it's made like. For learning for cause, this cause, exactly because like they'll speak really slow and they'll be like hola como esta right soy jonathan mucho gusto like it's <laughs> and it's like really like cringily that's how I, slow and stuff that's how it was it was like um what it is <laughs> but <laughs> yeah cuantos años tienes like that kind of stuff, you know what I mean? Like, oh, it's like, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah. oh, I thought that was a question from the chat. I'm like, oh, no, no. no. Uh, <laughs> extra Espanol is very popular. Soy tu fan. Voy a procurar. Procurar. See, yes. my Spanish is rusty. What is, what is procurar? It's kind of like a, a fancy way to say gets. Like you would hear this, like you would see this word in newspapers or something like that. Nice. Okay. Yeah. I got it. All right. So that's. I'm gonna. What? Oh. I, uh. To procure. Okay. Yeah. I get. I get. I mean, I felt like when I saw procure, I was like to procure or something of that nature. Oh, but I, was, yeah. I was like, I don't really know. Anyway, I'm gonna work on my Spanish. That way, it doesn't suck. Maybe one day I'll stream <laughs> and speak in Spanish. Um, if you don't know the word, it doesn't help. It's super slow. I actually agree with that. I think listening to slow audio. I mean, I guess if you're just getting into it and you're trying to parse the sounds, I can see where slow audio is beneficial for just a little bit. But I think realistically, man, you just need to just get in there and just learn how to hear the language. Like, because when you speak slowly, you you space words where you wouldn't, right? Like I've talked before about the idea of, and I never can remember what it's called, and I literally say the same lead up every time before I say it. Um, and it's that, you know, my, my friend who teaches English in Japan has to explain to his kids, in English we have this thing where if the word ends in a consonant and the next word begins in a vowel, the consonant jumps off of one word, off of the last word, and jumps onto the new. Like, mm. um, if you're going to say you're um, getting... Uh, getting... Getting eggs right i'm getting gags i'm getting I mean, gags is how it comes <laughs> out but if you were to speak slowly you wouldn't right. say i'm getting right in gags you would say i'm getting <laughs> eggs so it's like i think there's a there's a there's definitely a reasoning and a, and a more so better reasoning for listening to just how it's actually spoken right um well i think you could probably um well it might, you know, it could be a way to start acquiring vocabulary a bit easier. That gives you a little more momentum That's, because yeah. at the end of the day, when you introduce more authentic things, things will take care of themselves. You know, it's like, it's like the same thing. Like, what Spanish do you learn? Do I mix uh, dialects? You know, you you get a foundation, and things just start taking care of themselves. So yeah. Here's an interesting question, because uh, this is always asked a lot. You're a near-native Spanish speaker. Does it help you to understand Portuguese? I don't know. Have you ever looked into that? Like, can you understand right. Portuguese to an extent? Because I know that they're very similar. That's a, that's a cool question. Uh, first of all, I wouldn't say near-native. I would say advanced. My ultimate goal would be 
near native. You know, mm. I'm somewhere in the C1 range floating, whether it's C1.5. I'm not sure, but I'm not going to overly extend that. But that is the goal. Um, it's funny that you say that because I remember being five months into Russian and randomly hearing Italian. And I'm like, wait a second. I understand more Italian than I understand Russian. And I don't even <laughs> study mm -hmm. Italian. And I barely ever have a chance to listen to it. Yeah. The same thing happened to me um, just a few days ago. Uh, I was going to wash the dishes and I saw that um, uh, Gabriel and, and Steve, um, mm -hmm. you know, did a, a video together where they speak Portuguese. I go, I want to see how much Portuguese I understand. So I, I hit play and I just do my thing and I'm like, I understand virtually everything. And I thought of you because you're like, man, people are going to fight me for this. But, you know, I think that is Portuguese is like a drunk Spanish. Yeah. No, absolutely. I still think that, man. Um, which I know, uh, I know Portuguese speaker. Like uh, when I had uh, Maria Teixeira, Teixeira on here, she was like, "Oh no, Spanish is drunk Portuguese." And I was like, "I can," because she's from Portugal. So I was like, I, "I'll, I'll give, uh, you, I'll give you that one." But I think, but there's so like Portuguese is so much more relaxed with like, they're just the way they say things. It's almost like it's yeah, it's not as absolutely enunciated. Uh -huh. It's very. If, and maybe that's just to me because I don't, you know, I, I don't know anything about Portuguese or anything, but like it feels very loose and it just kind of, they don't enunciate as much and it's just kind of right. very. Um, you know, in terms of, let's say if you were going, yeah, well, I know Portuguese has more sounds in it than Spanish. And it does seem a bit more loose. And honestly, I'm going to. Maybe I'll make a controversial statement here, but sometimes I feel that, at least from the perspective of an, of an English speaker, Russian is, sometimes for me, it seems like it's actually, it's an easier language for us to pronounce than, than like, speak Spanish, let's say, with its true, in its true phonetic system, because there's a lot of overlaps in sound in, in mm -hmm. Russian, whereas in, in Spanish, you have to make this sound, and it has to be this pure sound, and it's really hard to have your mouth constantly like be stressing these words mm -hmm. and you know because american english is kind of relaxed as well and it's like you know hey i'm talking like this i could speak like that but you know, i'm just going to speak relaxed but mm -hmm. in spanish it's like you know you got to make those vowels really like how they need to be and yeah no ab it's ab kind of tough work for the mouth sometimes to be honest uh, absolutely absolutely um uh how did you do it sometimes sounds super fast i don't know i don't i don't i don't remember what we were talking about when you said that sorry sounds super fast whether um, it's portuguese spanish um mm -hmm. we did say that spanish was like the second fastest, fastest spoken language and japanese was the first first yeah based on words per minute yeah if you uh because I, I can't remember what we were talking about there. I mean, like, I, it's like I kind of do, but like we had a like, question about Portuguese. If I could understand it as a yeah, as a I can't remember. speaker. Um, Ada says I feel like Spanish is Portuguese in slow motion, and I'm a I'm a Portuguese native speaker. So there you go. So even right. the, even the Portuguese are. Um, do you have uh -huh. so so let's let's go down the road here because I, I want to talk about just a couple more things real quick before we go. First and foremost. Um, you can just briefly touch on this because I put it in the title of the video, but I saw Katsumoto on Twitter had mentioned putting your device in your na in your target language, and you said that you had switched your phone from Spanish to Russian. Right. So how how has that been? Do you think that that's helped you, or do you what what do you th like? How, how is that going? Dude, I did that last night before I went to bed. So I woke up and all of a sudden my phone was in Russian. I'm like, what's this? Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh wait, I did that last night. So. Today is my first day of having my phone switched to Russian. And, um, you know, it's, it's an idea that you have in the back of your mind. But honestly, there's still so much from, like, the whole Spanish, thing, Spanish things that I could mm -hmm. learn uh, having my phone in Spanish. But it's been really interesting, although I've done it a day. And uh, some words, I can understand what they mean. Uh, some words, not exactly, but you kind of know due to the the placement position of, mm -hmm. of the words that, okay, this must mean that, this must mean that. But um, when I was going to share the link on Facebook uh, for this this podcast, I'm like, oh, dang, which one of these words is um, uh, share? 
and I had to kind of look that one up. I'm like, oh, it's this one, right? So I, right. I, I didn't want to get it wrong. I didn't want to say I'm not interested in just like have <laughs> everything go astray. No. But I ordered, um, the funny part was I ordered from Uber Eats today. Uh, and I'm like, oh, shoot. I'm like, okay, I have to be really careful with this because I wanted to uh, delete an article. I wanted to just uh, mm-hmm. remove an article, of one of the things I was ordering. And um, I'm like, oh, if, if I get this wrong, it could be bad. So luckily, yeah. it's, it's I'm one day into it, but it's kind of like an adventure so far. But I can see um, the just the positive effects of it is already because it's really make, making my mind notice and although today is just the first day in noticing eventually i'll acquire these words but mm-hmm. i'm having fun with it so far yeah yeah because because when you do that it actually any of the apps that are available in that language it defaults them to that language right yeah yeah and, and i'm like oh wow okay uber in russian all right. Yep. I was Twitter in Russian. I was thinking about doing that for Japanese, and then I thought, you know what though, Japanese like it's just a whole different animal and beast on its own. Yes. And I was like, I definitely want to make sure. Like, there are um, probably five hundred kanji that I can recognize in terms of their English like kind of equivalents, but that doesn't make me comfortable to use a phone in Japanese just yet um right right so, give it time i mean basically today was just an experiment i didn't expect to keep it on the whole day but somehow i did and hey yeah. why not continue tomorrow Yeah, no for sure for sure um changing the oh yeah changing the language on your device helps a lot so um and the other the other question i wanted to ask uh or in turn or, or just get into for just just a little bit and that is um what is your so like you're still studying your Spanish and your end goal is kind of to be kind of that near native, right? Right, right, right. Um, with Russian, is your Russian goal to have that near native or are you just wanting to be just comfortable in it? Right, you know, um, I would say that I would at least want it at a B2, but, you know, you say these things never knowing where life could lead you, you yeah. know? So who knows? I mean, I make it to B2 and just say, I got to do C1. I got to keep on going. This yeah. is too amazing because the way that I am feeling right now, really, that's what it's going to come down to. Um, but it's great because I have a lot of Russian students and, you know, they're such great people. I feel like, you know, Russians in a way, you know, I feel that somehow due to stereotypes or just whatever, you know, let's say Mexicans got some kind of bad rap or some like it's completely false. And I feel like Russians, to some extent, also got some of that. Maybe it's due to uh, the old age conflicts of uh, mm-hmm. the Soviet Union. But my experiences with Russians have been so positive and so yeah. great that it's also just such a great motivator to keep on going. Yeah. And so, no, you know, the I, sky's the limit as well. Okay. And in in terms of, like, perhaps a few years down the road, is, is there any other... Uh, Link. I know, well, I know that we had briefly talked about like Vietnamese and stuff. But what would kind of be your what What would be a couple more languages on the radar just down down the road? Absolutely, um, and that's all I can tell you. It's just like maybe on the radar because you know, honestly, from my mentality, like I have to try to understand like the people on Facebook that have like twenty languages, and I'm like, um. I'm just so interested in like mm-hmm. Russian and Spanish, and um, I've I've got some things out there on the horizon. For example, like after Russian, the way I feel now, it would be Mandarin, right? Mm-hmm. Because I think it would just be so interesting. I'm kind of, you know, I'm quite fascinated with let's say ancient China, Chinese history, and it mm-hmm. would be lovely just to, you know, explore that whole world. Mm-hmm. Okay. And yeah. one last thing is like, you know before I even knew that I, I liked languages. In 2009, 2010, I had made good friends with a, a guy from Iran, mm-hmm. and he became a great friend of mine, and he brought me into the, the Iranian community in Akron. And, you know, what you said about Vietnamese really reminded me of the Iranians because they are such warm and, and nice and, and just beautiful people. It's, it's just incredible. And, you know, they would teach me some Farsi and... You know, I thought, you know, wouldn't it be nice to learn Farsi for, mm-hmm. uh, you know, because of my friends and yeah. all that. 
So no, I agree, man. And that's what I've found is you know you have these stereotypes everywhere. But anybody I've ever ran into, like um, I went into a like I, I went into a smoke shop. I don't smoke. My boss smokes, and he wanted me to pick him up some stuff while I was on lunch many months ago. And I went in there, and the guys spoke Arabic, and I was like, "All right, I'm gonna learn a couple words and go in here and just try to say something." And I did, and like I know that I made that video recently about how I freeze up, and I I genuinely uh-huh. do that. But for some reason, it was different with these guys, and I went in and just dropped a you know a word here or there, and like, and they were so like, "Oh man, yes, that's great," you know, like so wow. warm and wanted you. And I did the same thing. There's as a matter of fact, there's the buildings beside of each other. Both people. Um, uh, these two brothers are from um, uh, uh, I can't think of what the it, it's a it's a it's a dialect that's very hard to find resource Yemen wow. they're from Yemen oh. and like the Yemenis I say Yemenis I don't know if that's what it's actually called or not but it's <laughs> the Yemen okay. dialect of Arabic I I couldn't find a lot of resources and then the the people beside of them are from Egypt. Um, which Egyptian Arabic is you can find resources for like it's you know just anything you could possibly want and I did the same thing to that guy I went in and said I wish I could remember I couldn't, can't even remember the words for like hello and stuff right now but like um, you know just I was like hey you know I, I've uh, I've learned a couple words in Arabic and he was like oh what, what do you got and I, I you know busted it out and he was like D- it, like you could tell it just took him to a place of we're here working this job. We, we run our own business, but we're still kind of outsiders because we're foreign. Right. And then you come in, like you can, all this was just on his face. He didn't have to say anything, you know? And it was just like kind of this thing of like, it just like, it just kind of took them out of the moment for a minute and made them in a happier place because of course. I was just trying to make them feel welcome just by literally just by saying hello in their native language. I mean, that is the beauty of language in as like in this essence you know Mm -hmm. just this connection this understanding you know it's like i have a a, a russian student she says oh her grandma doesn't like americans okay what does that mean her grandma's a bit old you know she went through the whole soviet system okay okay but i know if i go there and i sit down at the dinner table and i speak russian and i show my passion i show my respect her her whole just idea is going to change and that's what language does and i think the which i don't want to get into this per se on this show but i think a lot of the reason that there are stereotypes is because of every country produces their own propaganda towards other countries yes and and so you know obviously if you're watching the news you're gonna say oh man these russians are bad or the russians are gonna be like these americans are the devil or same thing with chinese the russian was the bad guy (laughs) yeah so but um uh, the Larry says bald and bankrupt is perfect motors motivation for learning Russian. He travels through so many countries using just Russian. You know what? It's, it's absolutely crazy. I was just going to make a, like a video about this. You know, I've been making weekly update videos on like on my, about my progress basically every Sunday to come out Monday. And it was going to be just about this. This has been on my mind because that first year of me learning Russian, it was so exciting to watch his videos in fact he is my favorite youtuber if we're just talking about like english he's my favorite youtuber because here's this english guy he's traveling through the ex like soviet republics he's going into the villages he's communicating um he's having great experiences and what what a great just yeah i'm gonna have to check that out role model man even from a different perspective of not learning russian that sounds like something i would enjoy i love watching like stuff like that, where they go to like I, I'm a big fan of um, uh, Indiegogo Traveler as well, where he'll go through like he's even like he said some really cool stuff where he'll be in like Afghanistan on like market streets and and like everybody there's calm and he's like I'm kind of afraid and they're like well we're just used to it now we're used to like kind of the that right. war torn element and stuff and he's and you know it, 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 it really really cool stuff so. Of course, um, and he sheds light on a lot of things. Like, for example, he goes to this one place. Uh, I think it might be in, in Georgia, and he talks about how this place is, like has suffered since the fall of the Soviet Union. And, like, these are the stories that you don't really know about or see in mainstream media. And here he is showing you firsthand how these people live, and they're, they invite him in, and they're so warm. Mm. And it's just really impressive, you know. Some people write sometimes, like, he's doing, like, Emmy award-winning stuff, and I completely agree. 
I mean, the guy for me is a is a hero. His channel is fun to watch because it's not just like one of those pure travel channels. This guy's got a great sense of humor, and he really you know knows how to interact with people. For me, it's yeah. my favorite YouTube channel. Yeah, no, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to check that out for sure. Um, all right, so I, I do have another question here, and while I'm asking this and he's answering, I'm gonna let you guys. If you have any further questions, uh, let me know, and I will we will we will get to those. Um, we'll start wrapping things up here. It's been an hour and a half and I, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be better and mindful about people's time. So, but, um, <laughs> Ada says how, uh, so yeah, if, if you have any further questions, let me know in the comments right here on the, or on the chat and, and I will get to those. Um, Ada says, how do you keep your studies when you have a busy schedule? Right. So it's just, this is just about habit construction, you know I mean? So I'm, I'm doing English classes from seven o'clock in the morning to uh, two o'clock in the afternoon. And sometimes I have evening classes and I only really have an hour break in between where I just eat. So for example, I know how motivated I am about Russian. So I kind of need to get Spanish and do my Spanish before I, I do my Russian. So I, I finish um, my classes in here. I walk outside, well, I walk into my living room and Near my balcony, there's there's a chair, and right on the chair, it's the book that I'm reading and listening to in Spanish. So when I walk out, I know what I have to do. Mm -hmm. I just go sit on the balcony, do my 15 minutes. After that, I eat. After eating, I know I have to do my Russian uh, before my my classes start again. And basically, that's it. It's you know, habit implementation. Habit implement, yeah. And I think that's. Um... The, the big part is forming that habit because once once you form that habit um becomes a part of you it, it becomes a part of you, right I mean, yeah so you don't want to not do it yeah I mean, you well just... you know if this was the past me you know after we get off this interview i'd go to bed but i also know i've still got i have 20 minutes left to hit an hour of immersion in japanese today so i'm gonna go watch 20 minutes of stuff because i know that you know i i want that hour um absolutely and, sure. and so and that's the thing like i you know i've i've gotten to where i i want that um, and I, I think what you said earlier is a good point. You know, I, I was on the fence about this earlier on, and then I've talked to a couple of people who've said the same thing. Like I, I interviewed, um, Kiniku Ninja, uh, Ash, who was a, an MIA Jap or actually an AJAT Japanese guy, but he only, he only actively immersed for 30 minutes a day because it's literally all the time he had. He, he was a teacher and there was like a 40 minute commute. And he's also, he was training to be on, uh, Ninja Warrior, which he actually was on the Sweden version of Ninja Warrior. Whoa! Yeah, and like if you follow him on Instagram, he's always po he was posting stuff today where he made this like wheel out of wood, and it's got stakes on either side. And he was like, he would push down, or he would do a push up on it, and then he would jump with it onto a log, and like you know, of course it can roll. And he was holding like just to, for his core strength and stuff. Really, really interesting. Uh, really, really wow. interesting dude, but. Um, you know, he, he immersed 30 minutes a day and, you know, I, I know that there's a lot of people who were talking, you know, and I've even talked to Matt where he's like, I just really think you need at least an hour a day. Right. And I think what I've taken away from that is for, first and foremost, you know, I, I think a lot of, you know, everybody's different, but I think that, I don't know, maybe I'll ask Matt next time, but I think ultimately what he means is, and I, I don't want to be speaking for him, but it, it's an hour a day in terms of your your study whether it be your immersion and your anki study or you know in terms of the mia method obviously if you're doing okay. something else it's not but like so if I, if I watch 30 minutes i know that i would get more benefit out of an hour but i also feel like if i'm spending another 30 minutes reviewing flashcards like getting my kanji and stuff done i know that that's also good right and then i also think that because I've always criticized the Duolingo five minutes a day to fluency thing, right? <laughs> um, How many days will that take? Yeah, exactly. So let me pull up my calculator here. So <laughs> in order to learn Spanish, what do they say? 600 hours? Hmm. So 600 hours. All right. So first off, we're going to go five minutes a day. We're going to multiply that by 31 days, which is 155 minutes. Uh, multiply that by 12 months, that's going to be 1,860 minutes. Divide that by 60, that's 31 hours a year. <laughs> so multiply that by math, 25-ish uh, uh, maybe? 31 times 25. 
All right, 31 times 25 is 775. So, I mean, it's still, you're looking at 31 times 20. Whoops, 31 times 20. That's, all right, so roughly 20-ish years to hit 600, 600 hours of study, so. Uh, yeah, and um, actually, uh, what was it? Lamont from Days of French and Swedish had a good video where he talks about, like, if, I think it was in his 15-minute day video, how that's not a good idea, how, like, the gravity is pulling you actually towards the ground, man. That was a great metaphor. I really mm. like that. Yeah, I love that dude, man. He, That dude puts out some special content, man, the way that he does stuff. I, I think he does such... Right. I, I, that guy is one of my favorite. Uh, For sure, one of my favorite people. So, you, you know, I always, I always thought to myself, you know, I, you may have read a comment that I'd written some time back, but I discovered you guys both around the same time. I wanted to say, say like January or February, mm-hmm. and um, I started thinking, these are my like two favorite, um, let's say smaller channels, right? Mm-hmm. You were maybe at six hundred, seven, <clears throat> seven hundred, and he was like at a thousand five hundred, but. I mean, he he's ex- blown up. He exploded. He's blown up. But it's <laughs> man, it's he, he does such good content. I'm ha- I'm happy for him, and he yeah, for sure. Oh, and, and he doesn't pull any punches, right? Like even that in that video when he did a review, he said that company reached out, and he was like, "Yeah, but I'm gonna say exactly what I think about it." And they were like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> by the way, you better prepare. Yeah. So, so very very interesting. Uh, let's see. Uh, and thanks. you've had a good boost too. I mean. You had a you had a nice following, and all of a sudden you had a nice little thing that pushed you over the edge. And yeah, I I, I still credit most of the success that I have to Lindy. Um, she uh, sent me a message on Facebook asking if I wanted to do an interview on her channel, and I was like, ah, yes, absolutely. Oh, how awesome! And because um, I've I've followed Lindy for a long like a long time, um, not like before she had a huge following, but like for for a long time. Oh yeah, and I be- and I, well, and I became friends with her too because of um, we kind of shared the similar interests. Like she's like a Christian person, and I'm a Christian person, and oh, like cool. um, and but also in the regards of not shove it down people's throats, Christian uh, people. Course. Um, so we we kind of had a lot of similar beliefs. So we we became friends, and and she asked me, and I was like, yeah. And so and as soon as that interview went live on her channel, man, it just like it just started. Porn in the Larry oh, said I great. discovered you through Lindy. So yeah, it's it's exactly really like, yeah. So it's, it's really funny because although you know she's one of the most famous polyglots on the internet, and I was always aware of her, but I might be the only one or one of the only one who uh, basically I was more familiarized with her through you. So you you Whoa. know it was usually the other way yeah. around. But that's a that's hilarious. <laughs> that's 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 funny. I sent her a message yes, yesterday, and I was like, hey. Uh, I got monetized on my YouTube channel, so the first check I get, I'm giving you some money because it's basically all be- <laughs> all because of you. So, uh. but but you know, I also had um, Luke Truman told me he was like, "Hey, you know, you um, you gotta understand, even if she gets eyes on your channel, it's still you that keeps them around." Of course. So, and I was like, "Well, that's a that's a nice, interesting boat of confidence." <laughs> so, whatever. For so. sure. Um, well, everybody, I'm going to start, I'm going to wrap things up there. Uh, thank you for these interviews. Oh yeah, no problem. I, I enjoy doing these. I love talking to people. Well, what's funny is I, <laughs> I'm a fan. I'm as big a fan as I, anyone, really. You I, know me, I've been there since like day one. Yeah. I, I love talking to people when it's about things that I enjoy, you know, languages and stuff like that. And I know, I feel like even though you're talking about the same thing. I mean, it's language learning, but I honestly feel like every single person has a different outlook that can lead to something that you can take out of it Absolutely. for your own benefit. Absolutely. Because not you everybody know, does everything the same. For sure. You know, I, for one, I discovered about um, Matt versus Japan through the Steve Kaufman interview, you know, because mm-hmm. like I said, I, I'm a big fan of that, uh, of Steve and all that. And he, he was, he's just been like so epic in his, language learning uh, thought steve like he mm-hmm. I, for me that's like the channel if you want to learn about language learning because he just has so much material and it's amazing yeah. um but um then i discovered more about matt then i discovered more about you know who he was influenced by and it's in, you know it's interesting because i don't need to be like let's say you know i i have my way to learn languages or the way that i've been learning languages but it would be stupid not to take really cool and great ideas and implement them in the way that you can so i'm just mm-hmm. completely open for anything that's that's really positive and 
you know, I made a video about how he had influenced me. And the way that he had influenced me was just to start watching uh, native content without subtitles, because he made a great point. He says that you're really never ready for it. So just throw yourself into it and just mm -hmm. like kind of battle it out, basically. Yeah. Well, and that's that's when I started thinking, too. Or, you know, and I've thought this for a while, even before I started MIA. But, you know, everybody has this idea of I don't want to start watching content or I don't want to start speaking until I know the language then you're never going to do that <laughs> because there is a big difference in the way that you're taught and what actually happens. Right? Like, um, I have a ton of Japanese books. Um, and I don't think, and I could be wrong. Somebody could tell me in the comments if I'm wrong, but I've never seen the word yapari in any book, uh, that I've read. And it is one of the most common words that I have heard on any YouTube video I have watched. It's what? everywhere. And it's just because it's everyday speech versus by the book speech. So for sure. But anyway, uh, well, dude, thank you so much for joining. Like I said, everybody watching up to this point, And if you finish this video, go check, uh, go check Mark out on, um, I have his YouTube channel down below. He makes videos weekly doing updates and, and stuff like that. And go check out his Twitter and, um, Keep supporting people in the language learning community. And um, do you have any just in statements? Any any final final thoughts as the Jerry Springer world would <laughs> say? Well, first I want to thank you for having me on because I'm relatively new, at least on the whole online thing. And I think it's cool because um, first of all, I think the reason that really attracted me <clears throat> to the show was because I have these conversations with for example, some of my students, I just, I just absolutely love talking about this, mm -hmm. this whole thing. And um, all of a sudden, I started to watch your show. And it was like, Oh, wow, I'm listening to other people do exactly what I do. And, yeah, wow, you know, it's cool, I can kind of interact, hear other people's perspectives. And, um, you know, here you have, you know, people that don't have YouTube follow, you know, like you don't have YouTube channels, don't, or you have people that do that are kind of well known. And it's like, you're giving, I think, the language learning community, um, basically, you're yeah. giving them some kind of platform to share their experience and their ideas and their thoughts. And I think that's really cool because, you know, like I said, <laughs> you know, you, I used to think of you as like the smallest YouTuber that I really liked, right? Mm -hmm. But it turns out that there's so many more that, you know, are out there or like yeah. people that are not even on YouTube that are really cool to find out about and hear their story and just... Yeah. You know, it's a great community. Yep. And that's the thing, man. I, I will, anybody, I will never change that. If I have, if I have the same amount of subscribers until this channel dies, or if I get a million, I will never stop interviewing people from all different facets, YouTube channel or not one subscriber or a million. I will never, I will never, I will never be the guy that says I only want bigger name people to attract more people to my channel. Cause I think everybody, everybody, whether you have a channel or not, or even if you've never even been online, I don't really care there, if you, if you're learning languages, you can offer something positive. So of course, because you, I mean, you saw that you got a positive reaction before you had anybody who was really known. You were just talking with some people that you've communicated with Twitter, some buddies, and that was cool enough, you yeah, know? Absolutely. So, well, thank you so much for joining. Guys, I will be back uh, Saturday for anybody watching. I have a Ophelia, Ophelia Ver on my channel. Um, let me pull my calendar app here. Let me see what time it is. I think it's 3. No, it's 11 a.m. All right. Uh, I had no idea what time it is. It is at, I believe, 11 a.m. I'm going to have to double check with her on that. But I will be back Saturday sometime between 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. apparently. I don't know what my time schedule is there with Ophelia. Sunday I've got Maria um, on. So I'm, I'll be back with some more streams and hope to see you guys there. So Mark, yet again man, thank you so much for joining. Pleasure. And, uh, guys, I will see you all. I am not. I did this last night, I'm, or two nights ago. I'm totally not stalling to get to my <laughs> YouTube studio to turn it off here. Uh, cool. Yeah, I, uh, I will see you guys in the next stream. Have a good one.